conceptual framework illustrates what you expect to find through your research. It defines the relevant variables for your study and maps out how they might relate to each other. You should construct a conceptual framework before you begin collecting any data and it's often represented in a visual format. In this video, we will talk about the steps you need to take in order to build an effective conceptual framework. Now, the conceptual framework is developed based on the literature review of existing studies on the topic. If you want to investigate any kind of relationship between variables, it's a good idea to create a conceptual framework. For example, you want to know if students who watch Psych Nerds video lessons get higher exam scores. To investigate this question, you can use methods such as, a, such as an experiment or a correlation to test the relationship between these variables. So, uh, variables are simply the characteristics or properties that you want to study. The conceptual framework will map the expected relationship between them. In our example, the two key variables are hours of watching psych nerds videos and exam scores. If we want to test a cause and effect relationship, we need to identify at least two variables, the independent variable and the dependent variable. So uh, in our example, the expected cause uh, hours of uh, of watching psych nerds videos is in the is the independent variable or also known as the predictor or explanatory variable and the expected effect exam scores is the dependent variable or also known as the response or outcome variables in other words exam scores uh, depend on on hours of watching psych nerds videos Casual causal relationship often involves several independent variables that affect the dependent variable. However, to keep things simple, we will work with just one independent variable, namely uh, hours of watching psych nerds videos. So a conceptual framework can be designed in many different ways. The form uh, your stake uh, your, the form your stakes will depend on what kind of relationship you expect to find. To visualize our expected cause and effect relationship, we will use the basic design components of boxes, arrows, and lines. To indicate uh, a causal relationship, each arrow should start from the independent variable or the cause and point to the dependent variable or the effect. You should, uh, you should also use a line when you expect a correlation between two variables but not cause and effect relationship. So each component actually means something. When you use a box, this means or, or um, words inside boxes means that they are variables and arrows uh, connotes causal relationships while lines connotes uh, correlations. So. As seen in this example, to indicate a causal relationship, each arrow should start from the independent variable or the cause, in this case, hours of watching psych nerds videos, and point to the dependent variable or the effect, and in this case, exam scores. So, uh, when uh, indicating a, a, a correlation instead of, of, of causation, you need to use lines in, or you need to use a line. In this example, uh, we are relating the number of movies uh, Nicolas Cage has appeared uh, with the numbers, the number of people who drowned by falling into a pool. So uh, as you can see, we did not use um, an arrow uh, to, to uh, to justify the relationship between these two variables, instead we use we use the line. So, as you develop your conceptual framework, you should also aim to identify other variables that might influence the relationship between your independent and dependent variables. 
some common variables to be incorporated in the conceptual frameworks in, in the in con conceptual framework includes moderator va variables, mediator variables, and control variables. When we say uh, well, when creating a conceptual framework to explore a cause and effect relationship, you often need to deal with moderating variables, also known as moderators. A moderator alters the effect that an independent variable has on a, on a dependent variable on the basis of the moderator's value. The moderator thus changes the effect component of the cause and effect relationship. This moderation is also referred to as the interaction effect. So remember that our example framework uh, that our example framework maps the relationship between hours of watching Seitner's videos, which is uh, our independent variable, and exam scores, uh, which is our dependent variable. Now we add the moderator IQ. A student's IQ level changes the effect that the variable hours of watching Seitner's video videos has on the exam score. The higher your IQ, the fewer hours of watching Seitner's videos you must put in to do well uh, on the exam. In short, a moderating variable is something that changes the cause and effect relationship between two variables as its value increases or decreases. So another uh, variable that you need to take into consideration is a mediating or mediator variable. And it's an integral part of a cause and effect relationship. It, make, uh, it makes it easier to understand how the independent variable is affecting the dependent variable and what is uh, governing the relationship. In a cause and effect relationship, a mediating variable is a variable that links the independent and dependent variables, allowing the relationship between them to be better explained. Now, mediating variables can be difficult to interpret, and care must be taken. Uh, and care must be taken when conclusions are drawn from them. The complexity involved is beyond the scope uh, of, of this video, so we won't go into great detail. Instead, we'll focus on helping you develop a basic understanding of what mediating variable, of what a mediating variable is, and when it may need to be considered. So, uh, let's bring back our example: the relationship between the hours of watching Seitner's videos and exam score. Our hypothesis is that the more hours a student spent watching Seitner's videos, the better they will do on the exam. Now we add the mediating variable of number of concepts learned, which comes between the independent and dependent variables. The hours of watching videos impact the number of concepts learned, which in turn impacts the exam score. Now, the more hours a student spent watching Seitner's videos, the more concept they will learn, and the more concept they will learn, the higher the student's exam scores will be. By adding the mediating variable of number of concepts learned, we help explain the cause and effect relationship between the two main variables. It's important, however, not to confuse a mediator with a moderator. A moderating variable can impact the outcome of a dependent var variable, but it's not affected by the independent variable. A mediator variable, on the other hand, does not only affect the outcome of the dependent variable, it, also affect, it is also affected by the independent variable. Therefore, it helps explain the relationship between the independent and dependent variable. Lastly, we look at control variables. Now, a control variable is a variable that is held constant to prevent it from influencing the outcome of a study. When testing a cause and effect relationship, it is important to consider which variables might influence the relationship between your independent and dependent variable and control these so your results are as accurate as possible. 
So in our in our example framework, uh, we map the relationship between hours of watching Psych Nerds videos, which is our independent variable, and exam scores, which is our dependent variable, to test whether there is a cause and effect relationship between hours of uh, watching Psych Nerds uh, videos and exam scores. We also need to consider other variables that could potentially impact students' exam scores. For example, it is likely that if a student feels anxious, they will get a lower score on the exam. Therefore, we will add anxiety as a control variable. This means we should keep the variable anxiety constant in our study. We'll only uh, include participants who score low on a scale that measures anxiety on the day of the exam. So a conceptual framework illustrates what you expect to find through your research. It defines the relevant variables for you uh, for your study and maps maps out how they might be related to each other. Designing a conceptual framework guides data collection and analysis. Therefore, it's advisable it's advisable that before you gather your data, you construct a framework. Again, this has been Dex Kamitan and thank you for watching.